Hi everybody, I'm Mikey and this is part of the Advent Calendar series that is a crochet along. For those working on the crochet along with me, every few days a new video will be available to advance you to the next part of your project. There are 15 tutorials in all to complete today's project. If you're finding this and the crochet along is done, all videos will stay up indefinitely. In the more information of this video, you'll find a link to the playlist where all the tutorials will be listed in order for you to play along. The entire pattern is now available for free. For those who don't need a video, refer to the video description to get redirected to the pattern. So in the meantime, let's begin with today's tutorial to advance you to the next step and of course wishing you the very best of the festive season ahead. So let's move on to doing the cocoa and this is an ornament. It's three dimensional. You can see you can put your finger right inside for the cup of cocoa just like you see. The back of it is very similar to the front. The only difference is that you don't have the brown row put in here for symbolizing the hot chocolate or nor do you have the marshmallows. So you have a little handle just like you see and then you have the dangling one that hangs from the Christmas tree just like so. So today's tutorial what we're going to do is that you're going to need a tape measure in order to get to the right height and then you're going to do the front and the back and then we're going to continue that particular point. So let's move on to doing the front first using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. So let's begin. I'm using like an orange color just for the coffee cup or the cocoa cup whatever you want to call it and we are going to use this color and we're going to chain a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So once you have your nine done, let's do the first row. So you're gonna go second chain from the hook. So let's do that. So just count it back. So one and two go to the back loop only and I want you to just to single crochet yourself across the chain. So you'll notice that I'm not counting. So because you did second chain from the hook, you'll be left with only eight stitches there even though you chain nine to start with. So both the front and the back start off exactly identical. The only difference is that there's not a row of hot chocolate placed into it when you get near to the top. So this is the base of the hot cocoa. So let's turn our work and let's go up to row number two. So row number two it says one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet in the first one and one single crochet in each and then turn. So just chain up one and then one single crochet in each going all the way across. So that's not hard, right? It's like a square really when you go to start at the base. So now it says next row. So let's just get to the end. Turn our work. So now it says what we're going to do is repeat this row now until you get to a total height of two inches high. So remember just got to chain one and one single crochet in each going all the way across and what you wanna just do is get two so that it's two inches high first and then you're going to then join me back up when you get to two inches. So if you, you have to do two of these anyway for your particular um, ornament. So if you're doing it for the second time, what you can just do is take the first one and just measure it uh, in order to get to the right height. So please do that and join me back here in just a moment. So now I have my two inches done. So I'm gonna start this row and I'm going to chain one and single crochet into the next just like you see here. So what I want to do is that I want to get my next color ready and I'm just gonna create a slip knot first. Okay, so I wanna leave this color so it drags underneath the work. So this is like tapestry crochet and I'm gonna put the hot chocolate in. That's just, it's not the name of the color but that's what I'm calling it. So you wanna lay down the strings on top of the project just like so. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to do one single crochet in the first one. So go right up over top of the two strands and you're dragging this a coffee cup color over so it's ready for you on the other side. So you're just gonna single crochet that one and then it says to do one half double crochet in the next. Okay, so you're building up the coffee uh, a three dimensional look and then it says to do one double crochet in each of the next two. So let's do that. Just like that and now we have to start decreasing now. So it's gonna be one half double crochet in the next and then it's gonna be one single crochet here at the end. But before you finish off the coffee cup, which you have to just, or the coffee, it's, or the hot chocolate, you're gonna cut this strand first. Get it so it's cleared and out of your way. And you notice that I never finished the stitch. That's on purpose, so I'm gonna use the coffee cup color. 
here to finish it and then I'm just going to single crochet myself into the last one just like that. Okay, so, so let's do the last row then. So all you just have to do is turn it and it says slip stitch in the back loop of each of the stitches in the next row. So what you have to just do is that you just move out of the way and just go into the back stitch only. So if you're new to crochet, see how there's two strands? Okay, you're gonna choose the back one. Okay, so just get that first one that's in the back and you're just gonna slip stitch. So pull through and through. And then go to the next one, through and through. And what that does is it creates the illusion of three dimensional looks. So you're just gonna slip yourself all the way across. And then you're done. Okay, so that's it. So now you just have to uh, fasten off. So just get rid of this yarn. And what I would do is take a darning needle and I'll show you it to you one time. So you just have to take the the yarn just pull it through. Okay. Okay, so you can see that this is the back of the cup. So this is what it will look like in the front. So the coffee will look appearing to be amazing. So you're just gonna take your darning needle and you wanna get rid of your loose ends now. You have to create the back of the cup which is really easy to do. So all you're just gonna do is just drag it through the exact same color. And you wanna do a total of three times. So in this case I can actually go down it, this is the back of it anyway. I just don't want to impede on that chocolate colored area. And if you go back and forth a total of three times, you can have a really good look. So I want you to do this with all of the loose ends that you currently have and then once you do it three times, you can safely cut it right out of the project and you'll never see it. So I want you to do the same thing with the other colors that you have and then meet me back here in just a moment. So here is the front of my coffee cup just like you see here. This is what the back looks like. You see it's not as pretty so it's very obvious. So now you have to create the back of the coffee cup so that you can have the three dimensional insertation if you like to be able to do that. So the only difference between the back and the front is that there's no hot chocolate here. So the exactly same stitches exactly are being used including that going up and over like the single half two doubles, uh, half and single. So let's uh, bring up our, our yarn again and let's restart. And remember what it was, it was chain nine. So what I would do, if you gotta do two decorations anyway, I would do all this at one time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Second chain from the hook, single crochet all the way back. So what I mean by all nine is that I would do all of the same stages at the same time. So do all your, uh, do two fronts, two backs. And of course if you wanna make other decorations for other things you can do that. It's always easier to remember a pattern when you do it like an assembly line. It's like when they make a car, like it's not the same person that does the car start to finish. It's always like everybody has a little bit of the piece of the puzzle. So if you do it like an assembly line, easier to remember the pattern and you'll whip it off a lot quicker too. So remember what you're going to do for this and use the sample that you already have for your sizing. So you just turn your work and then just chain up one and one single crochet back and forth and for two inches tall. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for you and then you'll meet me back here. I'll just review one more time on how to, what to do after you get your two inches tall. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the hot chocolate but with this color instead. So use the other one as your, your guide for how big that you need it to go. It should be two inches anyway but if you're not sure, just take a look at that one. So I've got to my two inches. I took the other measurement. I just uh, put them up together. I knew that they were the same. So this is going to be the hot chocolate layer but without the hot chocolate, it's the same as before. So chain up one, one single crochet in the first. So then one single crochet in the next and then a half double, and two doubles in a row. So this creates the top of it and then a half and then two singles to finish. And remember what you did, then you turned your work and then you went into the back loop of that one. So just, you don't chain one first, just go right into the back loop only and slip stitch yourself across. So this is the back of the coffee cup 
and what we're going to do after we get this done is that I'm gonna show you how to do the marshmallows. I'm not very good at embroidering. It's one of those skills that I lack but I'll do my best and of course if you have that skill then <laughs> all the power to you. But uh, I'll show you how I think it needs to be done but then of course you can use your own creativity. So once you've slipped stitched all the way across you're just going to just trim your yarn. Do what you did before. Just get rid of the loose ends now with your darning needle and then get ready because we'll do some marshmallow stuff next. So what I want you to do is I want you to create a slip knot. On the one side we're gonna do the marshmallows. I had to try this a few times before I got it to work and it's only because I've not done this kind of stuff before. So what we have here is that we're just gonna put the darning needle on. So you have the slip knot on the other side and now you're gonna grab it here and you're gonna come from the back side so you can tell which one is the front and the back. And you're just gonna position where you think the first marshmallow should be. And you're gonna pull through but you're going to stop once it hits the slip knot section. So right there. Okay. So now what you're going to do, it's easier if you lay it down. Okay. And just put the yarn towards this side of the project and just put your needle down in front. Okay. So now you're gonna take this yarn here and you're gonna wrap it twice. So just go one. So you wanna keep it nice and close to that needle. So one and twice and two. Now you wanna go back down through your project but through a different section so that it's going in through somewhere else and you want to go through the slip knot in the back. So keeping it nice and stable as you pull through. Okay, so you're just pulling it nice and stable. You're not being too quick about it and this strand that I'm pulling through is gonna lock around the other two strands. There you go. And there's, you just gotta just pull everything just nice and snug just to tighten. Okay, so there's my first marshmallow here and then I can do it again. So just coming back up somewhere else. So maybe just somewhere else here. Just pull all the way through. And then again, lay it down on top. Going around twice. And then back down through a different section. And take my time and push and I'm pulling it through. I've never done slip knot or French knots before. This is fun. Okay. And then I'm gonna put another one in. So just coming back up through somewhere else. Lay it down on top. So the secret is, is to keep it close to this needle. So one and two and back down. Just like there and there is your three marshmallows. If you want more it's up to you. So on the back now that I've done that, so on the back here you're going to have this and you're just gonna drag this yarn through sections here in the back. So one, two, and three. Just like that. And then you're just gonna take the other yarns and you're going to get rid of them as well. So please hide in all your loose strands at this point and then meet back here and you have your three marshmallows just like you see here in the coffee cup. So let's do our handle, create an extra long tail here just at the beginning so that you can sew it in afterward and create a slip knot. So we're going to chain a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So it says one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So count it back. So one and two, turn it over, get the back loop only and do one single crochet. And it says three single crochets in the next chain. So this is gonna allow you to turn the corner so it looks like it's a handle. So one, two, and three. And then it says one single crochet in each of the next two. So moving back down the chain. So the next two will be single crochets each. So one and two. And then there's gonna be three into the next one. So put three into that one. So one, 
two and three and then the final one is gonna be one single crochet by itself. So there is your handle. So it's got that turn, looks like a C shape and that's it. So just cut this strand here so it's extra long and you just want to be able to put it into position just like you see here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to um, sew these together uh, onto your particular project and um, actually I don't even think I needed these long tails but that's okay. Um, life's good, right? So let's uh, put the everything together at this point. So what I wanted to do first, I'm just looking more carefully at the instructions. I would take this, you had to do it anyway so it's just, I just created an extra long tail really for nothing but I needed to do this anyway so I could hide in the loose ends. So hide in your loose ends right first before you begin to do the next part of the process. So just going in and out of your work total of three times in order to do that. So please do that with both and then meet me back here in just a moment. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to sandwich everything together. We're gonna to sandwich the front, the back and the handle into position at the same time. So creating an extra long tail here, we're gonna put everything together. So create a slip knot first and let's put our pieces together. So you have to just look carefully and see what is your outside. So this is the outside here. I can tell by the slip stitching that I see right here. There's the dots. You'll see it on this one more carefully. Do you see the dots? So those are gonna be the insides of each other. So when I go this way, this will be the back of the cup and this will be the front of the cup. So you can decide if you're left-handed or right-handed or even if it matters. But what we're going to do is that we're going to put that string onto our darning needle and get yourself started first and then you can uh, be able to get that coffee a coffee handle into position later. So you're gonna just start on the very top so you can be able to put your fingers down through the top of the cup. So just coming, match the two sides together and you're just gonna whip stitch these together. So just pull it close enough so you get the slip knot and then just feed it through so it locks it and just go through both sides. So now I want you to put your handle into position and you're just gonna put it in a position so that it literally is sandwiched right in between. So when you go through, you're gonna go through this one, you're gonna go through the handle, so put the handle through, and then you're gonna go through the front side one. So once it, once you get this done, it will be easier. There you go, so I got it through all three. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back down through the front here, go back through the handle. So make sure I grab the handle on the way back through and then back to the other side. Okay, so now I'm just gonna whip stitch as I normally would until I get to the handle other side. So when you whip stitch, you're kind of going back across the project. So now I'm gonna put the handle in. So I'm gonna come down through the front, through the handle, and then through the other side. And then come back up through the other side, through the handle, and then through the front. So the handle is now into position. So all you just need to do now is just whip stitch the remaining of it together. So just going back across like you normally would. So just going back over and just match the stitches if you're at the base because you can see them. And then just stop then when you get to the top of the other side. Don't go all the way across unless you want to. That's completely up to you. You know it's your creativity. You can decide what works for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'll leave that for you and then I'll show you how to finish this off. And then um, we still have to do the hanging loop as well for the Christmas tree. So I'm at the top so I've left an opening just like it is in the original. But if you wanna just go all the way across you can. So once you've gone all the way across just go in and out of the project a total of three times. So back through. So one and going through a different section and back up for two and go back up and down through for three. There you go, got it. So that's it. Okay, so we now we, all we just have to do now is create the loop. 
that hangs it from the Christmas tree from the advent calendar itself. So you see you got your little handle, you've got the back here and this is the original that we started with the strand. So what we're just gonna do is we left a little bit of an extra long tail and it's already kind of locked in anyway for a knot because of the way you crochet but just drag this down through the project. This is the back side anyway. Just drag it down, let it come out a different spot here in the back and then you can trim that out as well. Done. So let's create the little um, loop then that hangs this from the Christmas tree. So let's create the little loop and we just wanna create a little bit of a larger strand here to start with and this is gonna be chaining of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. That's it. Leave a little bit of an extra long tail, trim and pull through. Pull it nice and tight and tight and all you're just gonna do then is just fold it in half. Okay, just cut the strings at the same length. It's just easier and then feed those two strings through the darning needle. And then this will hang it from the inside, from the, from the opposite side. So just pull it through just like this. Okay, and then go back through the middle of the handle. Okay, and then back through the coffee cup again and do that total twice. So one and two. Okay, everything's nice and tight. So then here on the back, you just drag it through. Total how many times? Three. Three is your magic number. So one, two, and three. Okay, so once you get that done, just trim it and your coffee cup is complete. And you have to do that for two of these uh, for your ornamental decoration. Here is what it hangs from. Here's your little handle. <laughs> I don't have a spout. But until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Next up within the advent calendar is the snowflake. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.